Hello everyone, welcome to another session for question series for ARD uh, for Nabard. My name is Hansa Nora Sama and uh, I've done my Bachelor Honours in Horticulture and I've also completed a Master's in Nematology and Agriculture. So for today, I've chosen a topic on soil science and I've created three of the uh, questions and um, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. Okay, starting off with the first question. Which of the following is the best soil structure for physical properties of the soil? So first and foremost, we need to understand the classification of soil structures. Okay, basically, uh, classification of soil structures are divided on the basis of three uh, categories. The first one being the type of the soil. The second one being class of the soil. And the third is the grade of the soil. Physical properties, the soil structure for the physical properties come under the type of the soil. Okay, so type of the soil is basically a shape or the arrangement of the pets. So pets are the natural aggregation of the soil, all right? In the diagram, you can just see here, there are four types of uh, structures under the types of soil. So the first one being plate-like, the second one is prism-like, the third one is block-like, fourth one is spiral or the sphere-like. Right, so let me just uh, explain what this uh, plate-like and prism-like are. Okay, the first one is plate-like. So usually on the um, horizontal and the vertical axis, in this plate-like, the, the horizontal axis is larger than the vertical axis. So in this way, the whole arrangement is in a plate-like or uh, laminar-like. The first one is platy and laminar. When these, uh, when the unit, say about this unit, is thick then it's known as platy when it's thinner then it's known as laminar okay so uh, moving to the uh, prism like so in this prism like it's completely opposite of the plate like so where the the vertical horizon is larger than the uh, horizontal so in this way which uh, creates an image of a prism like well, is high uh, is longer than the horizontal line okay so under this also we have two types uh, the first one being the prismatic the second one is columnar right so in columnar I'm sorry, in prismatic, the surface is usually flat and it can be more sharper, okay? Uh, where the, uh, whereas in the columna, it's mostly rounded and uh, it's not flat-like, flat right? The length is about 1 to 10 centimeter in length and um, it's usually found in arid or semi-arid areas, All right? And um, lock-like or uh, further this is also this can be divided into angular blocky or subangular blocky usually in block like the three dimensions they are same and um, they are mostly confined to the subsoil and the characteristic have much to do with the soil drainage with the soil aeration as well as the infiltration the fourth one is spheroid or sphere like okay it's also further divided into granular and crumbly the soil is usually rounded or in sphere in shape uh, they don't have uh, not more than uh, two centimeter in diameter they have high organic matter and so Usually the infiltration or the uh, percolation or water holding capacity, uh, these are not really affected by the wetting of the soil, right? So the main difference between the granular and the crumby is that these are porous soil, but this granular is less porous than the crumby. These two, this granular and crumby, they're the most suitable for the crop production. So the answer, for this, which of the following is the best soil structure for physical properties of the soil? The right answer for this is crumbly and granular. Uh, in this slide, I have just roughly described a few of the types of soil properties. And the first one is res it resembles the cookies or the crumbs and it's usually less than 0 0.5 in diameter. Uh, commonly found in the surface horizon where the roots have been growing, right? And so we move on to the blocky. And the blocky is irregular blocks and it's usually one. 0.5 to 5 centimeter in diameter so don't forget to jot down the points or maybe just keep a notepad beside you as you're watching this so that you don't miss out any important points okay um, okay moving on prismatic prismatic again it's it's of two types another one is prism like another one is columnar so vertical columns of soil that might be number of centimeter long so it's around like 10 to 10 centimeter 
as I've explained before, and they are usually found in the lower horizons, all right? But in columnar, the vertical columns of the soil they have a soft cap at the top, more or less rounded at the top, uh, found in soils of arid climates. So these two are found in semi-arid and arid climates. Uh, in plate D, the thin flat plates of soil that is that lie horizontally, they are usually found in compacted soils. And the last one is single grain. Soil is broken into individual particles that do not stick together and always they, uh, they are accompanied a uh, loose consistency and commonly found in sandy soils. So in, this, in the same way as I've discussed for the classification of soil, so for the class, it's mainly for the size of the pets, okay? So uh, in a way, we can divide it into five classes as well, which is very fine, fine, medium, very coarse, and very coarse. On the basis of grade, we have structuralist, weak structured, modern, and strong structured. In going back, going to the next question, what is the diameter of the clay? Particle. The options are 0 0.02 to 0 0.2, uh, B 0 0.2 to 2.0, C 0 0.02 to 0 0.02, D is less than 0 0.002. So in this picture down here, uh, I've given two divisions on by the USDA system as well as the uh, International Soil Soil Science Society. Uh, but for this particular question, I've chosen for I I I S S S system. All right. Okay. So as you can see, the category we have clay, we have silt, we have fine sand, and poor sand, and we have another one called gravel as well. Right. The first one is clay, which is less than zero point zero two mm in size. Uh, the silt is zero point zero two to zero point zero two. Fine sand is zero point two to zero point two. Oh, sorry, zero point zero two. To 0 0.2, coarse sand is 0 0.2 to uh, 2, and gravel is more than 2. All right. So the right answer for this would be number D. Uh, in this uh, slide, I've given uh, the pictures of uh, different types of soil particles, uh, and the first one is here is gravel. The second one is uh, coarse sand. Okay, and here this is fine sand. And this one is a silt and clay. The smallest size particle, it, it belongs to the clay category, which is about 0 0.002, right? So the size of the particle, soil particle is fairly important because it allows us to know the flow of the water and the water movement, as well as the water holding capacity of the soil as well. So, um, it is also quite related to uh, the texture of the soil as well because if in a silt, suppose if, if a soil contains a high amount of clay in proportion to sand and silt, then the uptake, then the soil takes a longer period of time to absorb the water. Uh, so in turn, it will also affect the uh, uptake of these water by the plant as well. Based on this, uh, based on the size, we can also divide it into uh, different textures of the soil. Right, and um, this textures of the soil uh, we have generally broadly about um, twelve textural classes, but there are main only three major classes that we usually take. Uh, the first one being sand, silt, and clay soils. All right, in the sandy soil we have about say eighty five percent of sand. And in silt, we have more than 80% of silt. And in clay, we have only about 40% of clay, right? So um, and this diagram, it's, uh, it represents the textural triangle where I've given the person clay. And this side is the percentage silt. And this side is the percent sand. So these are the different uh, types of textural classes of soil. And these are all the 12 textural classes. The main being the clay, sand, and silt. Suppose if you have to read this diagram, uh, I'll just briefly tell you how to read it. Suppose we're gonna, uh, okay, so let's take uh, one of the textures, say about a silty clay soil loam, okay? So we'll take a, one point out here, and um, silty clay loam soil will have about, say, 60% of the silt and will have. 25% of the sand and 
will ha be having 30% of the clay. All right, so that's how we read this uh, textual triangle. So uh, I would like you all to comment which of these is most favorable for the crop production or for cultivation of vegetables or any crops. All right, so please comment in the comment section out of which uh, out of these classes which of these is most suitable for cultivation or crop production All right let's moving on to the uh, third question um, this deals with the soils of India um, when the soil survey of India was established in the year 1956 there were a lot of studies going on based on the structures and the characters of soil in an, in India so after they formed this uh, soil survey of India they broadly made eight groups of uh, eight groups of soil but there are only five major soils the, the soils being the alluvial soil the laterite soil black soil red soil uh, the desert soil marshy forest and mountain soils all right but the major ones are just alluvial soil laterite black red and the desert soil right so um let's talk about the characteristics of alluvial soil and we'll get back to the question so the first one is the it is known as the transported soil so why is it known as a transported soil because it's formed by the deposition of sediments on the by the rivers right this is also known as the river wind why? Because it's transported in the river basin. So it covers a large number of area in India, especially in India, say about like 43 to 45 percent of area is covered by this alluvial soil. And it is mostly in the indo gangetic regions and it is formed by the soil order called inceptisols and antisols. And it's coarser in the upper section and finest in the delta region. So usually in the delta region, say in the coastal areas. And it's also known as the coastal alluvium. All right. And it's light to dark in color. It's rich in potash and humus. Uh, it's poor in phosphorus and nitrogen. It's highly fertile and it's good for all the crops. All right. So some of the crops that can be grown on the alluvial soil are uh, rice, wheat, sugarcane, cotton, jute. So this alluvial soil is re uh, the region the, or the areas it covers are from right from the Indo-Gangetic belts or the plains, which includes from Punjab to Haryana to UP, Bihar, West Bengal to Assam. Okay. And in the southern part, it's mostly in the uh, there are parts of Orissa and the delta regions of South India. Geologically, this alluvium of the in Great Indian Belt, the, of the Great Indo-Gangetic Belt, this alluvium is divided into uh, two types, which is uh, the Khadar and the Bhangar. This Khadar is fairly young, okay? And so it's mostly sandy. And this banga is the old, old soil, and it is clay. Okay, so let's move back to the question. So state which of the following state, state which of the following statement is true in relation to alluvial soil. First, formed by formed mainly by alkisols. So this is wrong because it is formed by insectisols and antisols. Right. Um, number B. Uh, they are they are red in color no this is wrong as it is light to dark in color see the soils can be found in kerala karnataka orissa assam and coastal areas of goa and maharashtra this is also wrong and the fourth one says geologically the alluvium so soil is divided into new year or younger khadar and older bangar soil so this is right so the correct answer for this is number d uh, in the same way, I've actually given some of the uh, characteristics of the other four major soils of India. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the black soil. So black soil is formed by the solidification of lava over a large area during the when there was this volcanic activity in the Deccan Plateau. So So uh, this is also known as the regar or the black cotton soil, right? So they are dark to gray in color. 
and they are high in clay content as well and they are highly um, moist retentive uh, it develops cracks in summer it covers about 5.4 uh, lakh square meter so it'll be about like 11 percent it covers your area of about 11 percent in india and it's highly suitable for cotton production and it's a, it's rich in iron lime calcium magnesium carbonates and alum, uh, alumina so it's also it's poor in phosphorus nitrogen and some organic matters all right it's mostly found in andhra pradesh in Maha, madhya pradesh maharashtra in karnataka in tamil nadu and gujarat right so moving on to the lateral soil so the lateral soil it's formed from a latin word meaning brick and it's formed under high temperature and rainfall with alternate wet and dry spell right so silica is leached during high rainfall this soil is very it has the highest leaching so it's mostly formed by altisols and oxisols Remnants of iron and uh, aluminum oxides left behind is known as the laterite. So the color is brown to yellow and it becomes hard when exposed to atmosphere and it is used as building material as well. It is also uh, suitable for uh, plantation crops as well as rice cultivation. Right. Moving on to the next slide. We have, another, we have red soils as well as desert soils. So red soils, um, they are formed during the weathering of old crystalline rocks in the area of low rainfall, right? So they are more sandy and they are less clay. They are rich in iron, small amount of humus. So they are, since they are rich in iron, and so it creates the red color in this soil. It's also rich in manganese as well. Uh, it is poor in phosphorus, nitrogen and lime. It is slightly acidic and do not retain any moisture. So it covers about 3.5 lakh square meter area. So they will make about like 10%. Okay, and it's porous and friable. This is also known as an early soil because um, during the light and frequent uh, rains of the southwest monsoon. So what happens is that uh, when, this, when there is more frequent and light rains, these soil, they permit the early sowing of than the other soils right and um, moving to the desert soil uh, so desert soil is also known as a tar soil and um, the areas include arid and semi-arid regions of Rajasthan, South Haryana, Punjab and Gujarat it is uh, due to high temperature dry climate evaporation is faster and the soil lacks in humus and moisture right so um, after taking proper irrigation measures the soil can be used for agriculture the soil is very pervious and it has a low density so it requires a lot of densification to uh, increase the bearing capacity and the sharing strength so these are some of the uh, important uh, soils of uh, India so uh, let's move on to the other question so the fourth question says, according to land capability classification, the soils which are not suitable for crop cultivation belong to class 2, class 4, class 8 and class 1. So on the basis of uh, capability, land capability, it can be divided into suitable land, suitable land cultivation and non-suitable land cultivation. Class, uh, classes from 1 to 4 belongs to the land which is suitable for cultivation and from uh, 5 till 8 it belongs to lands which are not suitable for cultivation. All right, These lands were actually grouped by the U.S. Soil Conservation Service. They grouped it into an 8 category. Uh, in this small picture, as you can see, the class 1, I've given the color denoted for each of these classes. So for class 1, it den uh, it's denoted by light green. For class 2, yellow, 3, red, 4, blue, 5, dark green, uh, 6 is orange, 7 is brown, and 
Eight is fertile, right? So let's talk about the classes of soil on the basis of land fertility, right? So the first one is class one, which is the most fertile. There's no limitation on any uh, production or cultivation. And it can um, go for intensive, uh, cult intensive cultivation as well. They are mostly alluvial soils in the Indo-Gangetic Plains, right? Um, in class two, so these are also quite fertile lands, but they have some limitations such as slopes and they have a, a moderate uh, erosion. The soil belongs to the deep red soil or the black soil, right? And in class three, they are they're moderately good. They're moderately good for um, cultivation. And um, they have a fairly severe limitation, such as they have a steep slope, or it's maybe a high erosion. And they have a soil water permeability is also bad. And it requires a, a high um, soil conservation measures, right? Soils under this would be a shallow red soil, slightly saline soils, all right? And in class four, they're very, fairly good lands, but then it's mostly used only for uh, cultivation of pastures or hay, right? So the soils maybe are alkaline or saline soils. And from class 5 and onwards, the, these are the lands which are not good for the cultivation. So in class 5, uh, it's fairly reliable for grazing, right, and for some forestry as well, but with no limitations. Right, and in class 6, it's also fairly good for grazing and forestry. And, uh, but it has some limitations. Right, class seven. Class seven, it mostly belongs to woodland or for wildlife. And class eight is mostly used for aesthetic or water watershed conservation. So it, uh, it will belong to sassy, sandy beaches or river washes. So the answer for this would be C, which is class 8. So moving on to the last question. Um, the phenomenon slick inside is found in which of the soil? This question is on the basis of the orders of soil, all right? So we have 12 orders and these orders are formed under the seventh approximation. These are formed by a person known as Dr. Guy D. Smith, who is also known as the father of soil science, right? And he, under his leadership, they formed this system and it's based and the main features of this system is that there are two categories. The first one being the primary basis on which it is classified. And the th second one is the Latin or the Greek basis of nomenclature. Okay, so le let us read the question again. The phenomenon sickle, sickle side is found in which soil? The first one is insectisol. The second one is vertisol. The C, one, C is jellisol. D, sporos. Spot, spotosol. So um, the correct answer for this is vertisol. So let me just roughly explain to you how, why slick inside is related to vertisols, right? So vertisols basically they have a high clay uh, content, say about roughly about more than 60% of clay. This type of the soil that is associated with it is fairly important as it defines the nature of the soil. It has a clay called mont montorolite. And uh, this soil is also called as expansion clay, all right? 
so it creates a shrinkage and swelling of the soil so the shrink and swelling of the soil basically refers to the expansion and the contraction of the soil right due to this uh, clay content there is a huge expansion when uh, when there is when the soil is wet and the soil contracts or shrinks when it's dried up so this creates uh, two diagnostic features of the soil which give rises to this characteristics that is specifically for the vertisols only all right as you can see in this picture it gives a two diagnostic features the first one being the vertical horizon and the second one is the slick inside horizon so what happens due to this expansion and the uh, contraction of these feature it creates a huge crack or the huge or white crack in the upper upper zone and in the slick inside so slick inside is basically a clay uh, subsurface which have polished and grooved surface all right and um, there is a demarcation of the soils in this way and these are mostly in a grooved types and this is due to the swelling and shrinkage of the soil in india they are mostly found in the deccan plateaus uh, where they are typically formed by the basic rocks known as the basils and these are mostly found uh, in the black soil right or black cotton soil right so these uh so this is explanation for these uh slick inside to remember the 12 orders uh there's a trick to re uh, there's a trick name for it so um it's named as avagami house so these are just the initials for all of these uh 12 orders which will make it much more easier for you all to understand so uh this is just a simplified key to understand the 12 orders with their specific characters so the first one is soils with permafrost within two meter of the soil surface and is related to jelly soils. And when it's organic, when the organic matter is more than 20% is pistosols. And when we go to the acid porous soils with the subsurface accumulation of metal humus it complexes spotosols. And the four soils formed in volcanic ash, it's also known as andesol. Intensely weathered soils of tropical and subtropical environments is Oxysols, clay soil with high strength spell capacity, vertisols, and soils of arid environments with subsurface horizon development, aridisols, strongly leached soils with subsurface clay accumulation of less than base less than 35 base saturation is rutisols, ultisols, sorry, and grassland soils with high base saturation is known as mollisols. Moderately leached soil with subsurface clay accumulation of uh, equal to or more than 35% base saturation is alphysols. And soil with weakly, de weakly developed subsurface horizon is known as inceptisols. And this endosols, it doesn't really have any uh, characteristic, distinct characteristic features. All right. So um, uh, I would like to ask one question. So which of these soil orders is also known as the pot soils? All right. So please comment the answer in the comment section and if you have any doubts or any queries, please don't forget to drop by the comment section. Well, that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed the session and please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and don't forget to hit the like button if you have liked the session. Well, uh, thank you so much and we'll meet for the next session.